given the diabolical attempts and the thrust and energy behind them that the left is going to cancel Joe Rogan in an effort to limit free speech, in an effort to shift the Overton window to where if you want to express free speech, it better be smashing a window while wearing a Black Lives Matter shirt. Free speech is a God-given right. It is how we resolve our differences peacefully without weapons. It is enshrined in our constitution, in our bill of rights, and it's something that irks the authoritarians in our country because this fact is an impediment that makes it difficult for them to navigate around. And now they're trying to shut down a comedian, Joe Rogan, to get them to adhere to their rules as more than 100 JRE episodes have been purged slash removed from Spotify. What makes it worse is that our federal government, the Democrats in charge, the good old branded administration has done its best to work around the First Amendment, publicly requesting that misinformation be axed, be removed from the social media networks that make up our public square today. Our hope is that all major tech platforms and all major news sources, for that matter, be responsible and be vigilant to ensure the American people have access to accurate information on something as significant as COVID-19. That certainly includes Spotify. So this disclaimer, it's a positive step, but we want every platform to continue doing more to call out misinform mis and disinformation while also uplifting accurate information. Yep. It's a positive step, but there's more that can be done. The whole point of free speech is to allow ideas to wage war upon each other so that the best emerge and that you, the rest of the population, your family, all benefit from said best idea. This is not affirmative action for ideas where some get put ahead of others because of who has stated them as they desire. And they want it so that you can't contest them. As though it's the Catholic Church of the Middle Ages obscuring the possibility, by burning you at the stake, that perhaps, just perhaps, the earth might in fact revolve around the sun and not vice versa. Instead, the branded administration works with the woke left in an effort to restrict free speech, which, when it suits them, they describe as violence conversation that you're having is oppressive um, and so I am oppressing people by what I'm doing so I am I am exerting violence on people by my speech it that's what the sign says and that's what you just said it contributes to and the protester is saying that's exactly what I'm doing and she's saying that's exactly what her sign means so that means that you a faculty member at an American public university paid for by taxpayer dollars are conflating speech with violence yes um, speech can be violent. But of course, actual violence is mostly peaceful. And I find this to be problematic, to use their word. I find it to be a gigantic, ginormous problem. For anybody who loves liberty, who loves freedom, they should agree with that statement. Because as someone who has traveled to 60 countries, and I've lived in five, I can tell you what it's like when speech is not free. And I'm going to give you some examples of this, and then I'm going to tell you where free speech is in fact gaining ground. I've spent years of my life living in Thailand, and they still have a king there, and they have la majesté laws. If you say something negative about the king, and I don't have anything to say as I plan to go back there, you can be imprisoned for 20 years like that mercilessly. Somebody shouted something at one of the royal cars driving by in a Thai protest and was sentenced to a prison term of this length. Also, somebody left a bad review for a hotel in Thailand. They were subsequently imprisoned for doing so for using their speech in a way that someone in, with power did not like, they ended up in jail. I've been to Syria. I've seen the dictatorship in action. 
people dare not say anything against the administration, against Assad, because if you do, they are going to lock you up and torture you for any length of time. And you never mentioned the word Mukhabarat. What is the Mukhabarat? That is the secret service of Syria. And they have no compunction of torturing their civilians at length. Just to give you an example, somebody that I met when I went there, and I was there right before everything really blew up in, at the end of 2010, it was described to me that somebody stated publicly in a coffee shop that the current leader, Assad, had done a good job opening the country up. And everybody moved away from him. Why did they move away? Because it implied that his father, the senior Assad who had passed away, did not do a good job opening things up. This is the level where free speech is denied. Any criticism of the regime. And then you take in more liberal, and I put that in quotes, Middle Eastern countries that I've been to, whether it be the UAE, Turkey, Egypt, Jordan. You don't say anything against the leaders there. You speak out against the Jordanian king, and you speak at a decibel level a little bit too high, kaboom, you're imprisoned. And it ain't pretty in a Middle Eastern prison. Same with all those countries. And Turkey used to be the bastion of liberty and some sort of freedom in the Middle East, but is now being taken over by Erdogan, ha <laughs> you better believe you don't speak out against him. In Burma, Myanmar, huh, you get arrested and tortured also for expressing the wrong viewpoint against the government. They will go in and seize all the funds in your bank account. It's why they use gold there and why Bitcoin is going to catch on. Something that's more censorship proof. Something that is not easily confiscated by the government. But the government will confiscate your time if you dare say anything. I went to the Mustache Brothers, and I've got a video about it linked right there, and how they had a sentry outside of their shows to warn them if the government was coming because they were saying something or allowing celebrities like Woody Harrelson to speak on videotape, on a DVD that they were playing that said things that weren't in favor of the current regime. In Russia, if you're an opponent of Vladimir Putin with any prominence, you'll literally be, be murdered for speaking out against him, against the state. Look what's happened to those opposing him. It's happened time and time again. It's a little chilling, and it affects the discourse that I had with my friends in Russia. There are certain topics that you dare not broach. And then you have Canada, where you have the Freedom Convoy currently going on, and them trying to squash this free expression. Well, of course they allow Black Lives Matter while Justin Trudeau kneels with Black Lives Matter in support of them. But of course this freedom convoy, oh no. <laughs> and then you have Canada where they fine you $70,000 as a comedian for making somebody, fun of somebody in the crowd. Yes, it was by a five to four decision overruled by the Supreme Court, but think about the amount of time and expense that this cost him. And Jordan Peterson, Bill C-16, he warned against mandatory pronoun use, and a man in British Columbia is under threat of imprisonment for using the wrong pronoun against his son. Against his son, goodness gracious. But you know where free speech is actually gaining ground? In Eastern Europe and the former communist countries, like Poland, like Hungary, because they understand what it's like to have the boot on your neck, where if you say the wrong thing, they will squash your lyrics and send you off to the gulags. Because this is what it's like when they take away your freedoms. And here in America, we are welcoming these restrictions. The radical left is ushering them in and shaming anybody like Joe Rogan who might be against them, finding any way to pull the rug out from under them and to slash his throat so he can't speak. When you cut out somebody's tongue, it doesn't mean that you're powerful. It means you fear what they have to say. So stand up for free speech. Stand up 
for the likes of Poland and Hungary who are defending the world's freedoms while we entitled Americans who don't realize how bad it is in the rest of the world and think that because you can criticize Donald Trump in any way that you want, or I can call it the Brandon administration, that this lasts forever. No, this is something to be cherished. This is a right to be protected. This is a God-given right that can be taken away and has been by the authoritarian stewards of China and other places. So guys, subscribe, thumb up this video, hit the all notification bell. Peace. Have a fantastic day.